So I've created a game of rock, paper, scissors in Python that lets you play against computer over your webcam. You may have already seen tons of other tutorials on rock, paper, scissors. Frankly, most of those other tutorials are basic command line versions. They just let you type your move and it will generate a move against you and then it will tell you if you won or not. But we are going to do something a bit more fun and interesting. We are going to write a program that's going to visually detect your hands over a webcam and the program will also understand your move it's rock, paper or scissors. So yeah, let's get into it. Welcome back everyone. The idea of this project may seem a little difficult because it involves things like object detection and webcam streaming, but it's actually quite simple. It basically took me three hours to complete this project. If I break this down, there's six steps to complete this project. So let's go through these steps. Step one, we need a way to stream the video from our webcam into our Python program. In our video stream, we need to pick up each frame and then the program needs to figure out the hands and the fingers in that frame. To stream from our webcam, we need to use a library called OpenCV. So I've created this Python script file and basic structure right here. If name equals main, then we'll call start video function. I'm going to import CV2, which is the OpenCV library. You may need to install this package if you're using this for the first time. Now, let's create the video capture object. So this is assigned to the only camera on my machine, which is the webcam. Next, I'll create an infinite loop while true and inside it we'll call capture.read. This function basically returns a return code and a frame which is the current frame in the video stream. We'll call another CV2 function for displaying the frame on screen. CV2.imshow. It takes in two arguments. First one is the title of the window and second one is the image that is to be displayed in the OpenCV generated window. Let's run this and we can see that the window is displaying correctly. The problem here is that we can't really exit this program. So we need to find a way to exit this infinite loop. What I want to do is to exit the program whenever I press the escape button. OpenCV has a wait key method. So we can use that to break from the infinite while loop. Once you exit this loop, we still need to call two more functions. Destroy windows, which basically destroys the video stream window that opens up when we run this program and capture.release stops the webcam from recording the video. We can try to run this now and see that a window has opened up. I'm gonna press the escape key and now the window will close down and the webcam stops recording. That's our step one successfully completed. Moving on to step two, as of now, we have the frames coming from our webcam stream. What we want to do is to identify the position of our hand and the fingers in each frame. This is a seemingly difficult task, but thankfully we have a library for this and it's called MediaPipe. MediaPipe is an open source framework by Google. It has several machine learning solutions for media processing. As you can see, it has all of these cool stuff, but what we need is this one hands detection back to the code now we need to install and import the media pipe package instantiate our drawing module and the hands module the hands module performs the hands detection while the drawing module is used for displaying these things now all we need is to create an instance of the hands class and provide min detection confidence and min tracking confidence values you might want to play around with these values now use the frame received from the cv to capture object and call hands.process. This will return a results object which contains all the details of the hands detected in the image. Use the details from multi-hand landmarks object, run it through the drawing module and we'll get this. Now, MediaPipe is giving us all these information. The XY positions of every single point in this image. Let's try to understand what we're trying to detect. We have three scenarios. First one is rock. In this case, all five fingers are closed. Second one is paper. In this case, all five fingers are open. Third one is scissors. In this case, index and middle fingers are open while others are closed. Basically, we need to keep track of the status of each of our fingers. Are they open or are they closed? Let's take the index finger first. We can see that media pipe is giving us three points along the index finger. The idea we can use is that when our index finger is open, we can see that the point on the tip of the finger is going to be above the point on the base of the finger. And when the finger is closed, the point on the tip of the finger needs to be below the point on the base. And this idea works perfectly for index, middle, ring and pinky fingers. Let's keep the state of the fingers in a five character string. First character represents thumb, second represents index, third represents middle, fourth is ring and fifth is pinky. So if all is closed, we'll get the state as 00000. This will be the state for rock. For paper, 
it will be all ones. For scissor, it will be 01100. Now it's easier for us to check which move was made by the player, but we still have one problem. Our previous idea will not work for thumb. The reason is that thumbs bend sideways. Still, it's easy to check though. If the tip point is more towards the right as the compared to the midpoint and the base point, then we have an open thumb. In other cases, we can safely say that the thumb is closed. Now we write our functions to get the three points along the lines of each finger and check if they're closed or open and then set the current state. Ultimately, these states are checked against the expected states of rock, paper and scissors. Next, we need to package the whole thing as a game. And we need a start button. Whenever we click the start button, we want a countdown timer from 3 that lets the player know when to make their move. For simplicity, we'll keep the space key as the start button and start the countdown. Once the countdown reaches 0, we're setting a boolean flag hold for play to true. I'm not going to explain this part of the code because it's a basic timer functionality. You can read the code later on. Whenever the hold for play flag is true, that's when we need to detect the move from the user whether it's rock, paper, or scissor. Step 5. Generating the random move. This is an easy part. Basically, the computer needs to generate one of the three options. That's either rock, paper, or scissors. Let's put them all into a list and choose a random item from it using random.choice. Now, the last step is to validate who actually won the game and we need the program to wait for the next game to start. For validating whether your move wins or not, you might think about writing a bunch of if conditions, but there's a better way to do this. Let's create a dictionary assigning each element rock, paper and scissor to the other element that it can defeat. So we'll get something like this. Rock beats scissors, paper beats rock, scissor beats paper. Now we have the player's move and the computer's move. In case the player's move and computer's move are the same, we have a draw. If they're not, we can check out the player's move against a dictionary. If the value returned is not the computer's move, player loses. Otherwise, player wins. Let's run this now and see the game in action. This seems to be working fine, but you can make this better if you want. For example, you could create a good UI to indicate the computer's move with an image instead of text. Code for this project has been put up in GitHub and the link is available in the description below. If this seemed like a difficult project to you, that's completely fine. What I suggest is that you try this project anyway. The more projects that you do, you'll continue to get better at this. If you're looking to do more Python project tutorials, you need to check out this video next.